In post-war Sri Lanka, families are slowly putting their lives back together, rebuilding destroyed homes, trying to make a living out of the sheer necessity to survive. But for the Sivanyanam children, inside their lives remain just as shattered. Their father was killed as they tried to escape the fighting in the final days of war. Until the last moment, the children didn't want to leave the place where we had buried their father. They still have nightmares. Susainadin Saumini is today reunited with her parents. Still, she can't shake the trauma of being kidnapped as a child of 16 and forced to fight for the Tamil Tigers. If I had been home, my father would have protected me, but I was going to school. I try not to remember the past. The civil war that ravaged Sri Lanka lasted for three decades. For generations of civilians and also soldiers on both sides, the horrific experiences are seared into their memories. Two years on from the end of the conflict, the government has made rebuilding the priority. New roads, new infrastructure. In the push to develop the north, the physical remains of the war, like these shelled out buildings, are fast disappearing. But little is being done to heal the inner scars. They remain. In all of the country, there is only one psychiatrist for every 500,000 people, and there are far fewer in war-affected areas. Trauma experts say the government is not only slow in approving programs, but in some cases even blocks attempts to help people. What they fail to understand is that uh, along with the uh, physiological and the infrastructure and the economical intervention, there should be a psychosocial intervention as well. For now, aid groups are working behind the scenes. Al Jazeera was allowed in to film a counseling session where some 30 people shared their experiences. All in a hope of healing the distress so evident in these disturbing images. Steve Chow, Al Jazeera, Northern Sri Lanka.